for the show with Cheryl and myself. And we've already got we've got reactions already. I mean, we've not only just started and say hello to Catherine and to Corinda and to Rachel and uh, to Cheryl. Thank you all for uh, liking. Hey, the show. everyone. Hi. For liking the show before we started. That's good. So welcome to the show. All right. How are things today, Cheryl? Because we live in different. You know, oh, go ahead. No, come on. <laughs> You know, Stephen, this has been a very interesting week. And um, yesterday was an anniversary for me of some sort. It, it's a, I did a show on it. It was uh -huh. a, a 10 years, it's my 10 year journey into my journey of forgiveness. Because 10 years ago, on October the 10th was when my life turned upside down. And my husband at the time decided he wanted a divorce. And I I kind of I talked about that yesterday being that 10 year moment of sharing that with people out there that are having those type maybe they're in the thick of it right now I don't know but I really wanted to put that out there so it, that was a good week for me to talk about that and share to help others uh, indeed there are moments in our life which which are turning points and it's basically when something happens my wife was um well i was married for 24 years and my wife left us in 1999 and i couldn't talk about it at all for uh, for seven years um because she's, you're in shock whatever the people say there's nothing you can do it's just your your you come to terms with it over a period of time and you can't actually rush it um so yes, uh, I can empathise on the situation. And um, right, shall we get to, <laughs> to today's topic? Because we're not here to. Because you said you covered the topic yesterday. And, I uh, did. I just I just wanted to share that out for anyone that may be having that challenge. That that's out there for them to view if they would like to. Because I know it's such a big, uh, it's a big thing right now with people going through those life-changing events you know just like you said when you have a life-changing event boy things are never the same again and you need to figure out a way to move forward so yeah let's talk about all the fun stuff we're going to talk about today right. <laughs> so hello to bert as well bert's joined us hi and we're talking today about helping others go live and uh we like to start because it's it's important thing because people are afraid of going live and there are ways that they can do it. We can help with the nerves and actually a lot of things as we're about to explain. Cheryl, over to you. Oh, thank you, Stephen. You know, with um, helping people to go live, just like Stephen was saying, I've run into a lot of people who want to do it. And they feel like, oh, boy, I just don't know what to do. And I don't know what to say. And just I'll just give an example that that would probably help to start it off with is one of the people that I've helped and um, actually coming on as a host. I mean, that's a way to help, because it, as I come on with a ho as a host with someone, uh, one of the businesses I did this for was uh, like a grill shop. You know, they sold grills different type gas grills, pellet grills, um, charcoal grills. And um, by me coming on and being the host and actually introducing the show and introducing them, giving them a few key points of questions that I'm going to ask them. And then, you know, I kind of take the show out and do that call of action. It really they looked like pros. I mean, they were so comfortable. You know, they they just were, they said that was so easy. You know, I'm sure you've had that experience, Stephen. Well, you, you can make a difference to how a show is perceived and how the people on it feel. Um, if you're actually running the show yourself, let's just go through this. If you're actually hosting and producing the show, then there are a lot of moving parts that you've got to keep your eye on. And first time it can be can be nerve-wracking so that is why companies uh, essentially bring people in to produce and host the show and what you're actually doing is taking away the preparation you're taking away the promotion you're taking away 
the nerves on air because you're actually through the discussions you have before you go live you're actually able to ease people gently into being live on air and we've we've done it several times and the response is always good because what you're actually doing is seeing people at the best you're not actually seeing people who are trying to uh, run before before they can walk and uh, April saying getting help from others makes all the difference in the world it does especially in live video because there's, there's so many things going on once you've got used to it it becomes second nature it's like driving a car but uh, like anything it's good if you've got a driving instructor who sat there next to you saying and helping you through it showing the items on the agenda showing the comments on the screen and easing you through any panic uh, that happens because as you said you can actually i mean i've done it both ways you can actually host the show in other words you do all the introductions and ask all the questions or you can just be the producer in the background and the only the only people who know about you being there are the people in the show the people in the audience have no idea until you get the byline at the end which says produced by Cheryl Piper or produced by Stephen Healy uh, we, we can be quiet can't we yes I can believe that or not I can <laughs> <laughs> and I, let me say hi to April. Hey, April, glad you're here. And that, yes, that's a good good point. And what April's saying, it really does help. It makes all the difference in the world to get help from others, because you know when you think about it. And some people, they really don't ever want to do this themselves. They would be pe the people that I've worked with. They want me to host the show. They want to be able to jump on and know what the subject is we're going to talk about. This is their expertise. So therefore it is easy for them because it's easy for them to shine because this is their business and they can easily talk about the subject if they're led in the direction. And, you know, I find myself too, I will, um, if they blow by something like really quickly, and I'll say, oh, did you say, and then I repeat it back so that, so that I'm sure that the audience kind of caught. Because sometimes when we talk about things that we're, we know really well, we think everyone else knows what we know, <laughs> you know? And so it's that guiding, it's that, it's that coaching and guiding through the show as well and, and bringing points back around and, and helping to really make them shine. That's that's a good point because what you're actually doing is it's not a, when you're hosting and producing a show it's definitely not about us it's about the people who are actually live on the show and showing them at their best and that that's why it's good to actually guide but you, it's like what you don't do when you're hosting the show is answer is ask yes no questions because all you're going to get is yes or no so with practice you actually come to the, the point where the questions you are asking actually require an answer other than yes or no they actually require the start of a dialogue and it, it's actually getting that dialogue going about around a specific topic and actually drawing them out a little bit so they actually say what they're thinking because people often think about if you, we said to somebody right okay what's your thoughts on this and weren't on camera they could stand there for about 10 minutes and wax lyrical about the topic that they love but put them in front of a camera and they sort of clam up and it's the job of the host of the show to actually sort of draw people out exactly and and what i do especially working with you know like guys in construction like a, a, another um show that i've helped with they they own a patio store you know they build patios they make that whole outdoor living space and so you know, having fun with them. And, you know, like when I start that show, I'm like, hey, it's, you know, whatever the name of the show is time and it's Thursday at noon. And it's, and, you know, I kind of, because it's, it's that type of uh, audience that we're trying to attract. And once again, it's not about me. It's about pulling in their best audience and, and, and making it fun for them. And when I do that and I just, I, I, you know, find ways to make it fun. Then they laugh and then they start talking about things. And, and it's a good time for everyone who's watching and they right. get their information out. 
And one thing I wanted to bring up when I ask those questions that kind of guide and uh, bring them back to points that they may have gone by too quickly, it's a little easier for me to do that because I don't know their business. You know, yeah. I, yeah, I'm looking at it from a consumer's point of view who may be watching it. And so it looked like you wanted to say something with that. No, Go ahead, I'm, I'm agreeing oh. with you. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm be, because it, I'm like, let's, let's use the example of these, the patio store. I don't know anything about building patios. You know, I don't know anything about different types of stone and different types of mortar and different types of, you know, building out our fireplaces. I don't know about those things. And so if our subject is creating a beautiful outdoor living space, that's the, that's the subject for the show. Well, you know, as we go through, I'm going to be asking questions as though I may be the client because it's going to pull more information from them that maybe they're not used to saying because they know their subject so well. Well, it's, it's true of anything, isn't it? You, you know more than you think you know. And it's, it's drawing out the hidden knowledge uh, that, that actually brings everything to life and it answers people's questions. And if you're asking questions that people in the audience would have asked, then uh, that's ideal. Uh, the first show I produced, or the first commercial show I produced, was for uh, Irene, uh, who we all, Irene Chan, who we all know and love. And she was um, doing a, well, working for a website called One Stop. And One Stop wanted to, uh, they were using TV, but they actually wanted to reach out to a wider audience. So Irene and I, uh, I produced and hosted the show and Irene uh, was on the show as well. And it just, it just went so well. You can help people get the word out because if, if somebody goes out on their own, then they don't have all the knowledge straight away. It's gained over time. So because we've been hosting for so long, well, in, in, in video terms, we've been hosting for quite a while. Uh, then we've got all the tips and tricks on board and we can help everybody to uh, to go live on BeLive.TV. Uh, and it's fun and it should be a fun exercise. It should be enjoyable for everybody. So uh, now there are several different sides to this and I just want to run through them. First of all, uh, the, the first side that comes to mind is hosting the show, which we, we you touched on. You touched on actually being the host of the show, asking the questions, drawing the answers out and actually setting the tempo for the show and it's one of the keys is setting the tempo if you have a show where everybody is downbeat then you can't hope to have an upbeat and excited audience <laughs> so <laughs> the job of the host is to actually set the tempo isn't it it is mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of what i was saying about the one the one show with starting it off with, hey, it's Thursday at noon. So it is time for, you know, it's starting that off with that excitement. And then, you know, then the guys were all excited and they're ready to talk. And it's just it's just setting the tone, just like you said. Indeed. Now, the second element is the production side. Now, BLI TV is straightforward to use. But it does take some practice, doesn't it, to actually it produce does. a show that looks like a show? Yeah. Yes, it it really does. I mean, there. Uh, I know when I when I first started. Well, thank goodness for you, Stephen. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw, you know, some some beautiful uh, moments out to you because you have helped so many people to get started, and and I'm one of them. When I like I came in the Beelivers group and I had questions and there you were. And it's, it's just learning that process. It's, it's not hard. It's just taking the time to learn it and get used to doing it and, and bringing things up on the screen. Like right now you, we brought production up on the screen and remembering to do that and not just talking and forgetting to bring up any of your agenda items. <laughs> I mean, I've done that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you 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 get carried away in conversation. You think? I mean, we did the show last Friday, 
uh, together on, on Five Days Live. And I had an agenda with 31 items in it, which is overkill, total overkill. But every so often, as you were talking with Brigetti, uh, topics came up and I was able to put those on screen as they were relevant. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a big part of, of actually producing the show is to actually highlight what's showing. Because, and this is one of the reasons for doing it, um, is that if I put the title production and you actually happen to be on Facebook and you wander by, then you will know we're talking about production. Yeah, if it goes through, yeah. So the, the titles and the agenda are important. That's and, a good point. Absolutely. And may I may I share with the, what you were saying with the show last Friday, because you produced that show. You know, it was myself and Brigetti and RJ. And so, yes, you did have a lot of agenda items. And so you were by you producing the show and not actually being a part of the show, you were able to really throw those items up, like you said, as our natural conversation happened. And so that's much harder to do when you're actually on the show because you can't really interrupt your conversation when you're having that to, to go find the agenda items. And so you producing that was beautiful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It was a joy to be there. It was a learning experience. It was just a very enjoyable show to actually be part of. And uh, it, the magic happened because the three of you were, got on so well and uh, the discussion got going and it covered a wide range of uh, topics which were pertinent to uh, promoting the shows. And that's one of the reasons I love producing shows is that you learn so much and you get involved in things and topics that you wouldn't expect to, to be involved in. And sometimes the topics can take you by surprise. Uh, I'm not going to. Well, I'm going to mention a show I did two hours ago uh, with Linda West and Linda brought three topics with her and I put them on the agenda and the first topic was makeup. And I thought, well, I don't know anything about makeup. So I sat quietly in the background, produced the show while, <laughs> while uh, Linda was in, in the front. Um, so, yeah, the, the actual production of the show is an important element because producers producers should be heard and not seen. And the only people who should hear them are the people who are actually on the show. Um, and actually doing it is is uh, it's a skill. It's a learned skill. It's I mean, given the, the dedication to it, you can learn to do it. And you can learn to do it efficiently on your own show. And then you can transfer those skills to producing shows where you've got a guest. Because that's, that's a challenge. Having a show with a guest is a challenge because you're listening to your guests. But at the same time, you keep an eye on what people are saying. You keep an eye on the agenda. You're keeping an eye on the time. Uh, you're wondering when to bring photographs in or whether to share the screen. It's just, yeah, so production. Exactly. That was my show two hours ago as well. I, I do a show where I co-host with a friend of mine, and we have a new show called Messages of the Heart. And so, yes, I'm working, trying to do this whole production and making sure that, you know, the agenda items are coming up or the scroll call to action items are coming up while she's talking. I, you know, I have images I wanted to show that I had ready to show. Well, she started talking about one, one of the things that I had an image on. And so I just put it up while she was talking and it just, you know, led right into what she was saying. Then I brought her and I back on screen and it, it just made it, um, it was a little more enjoyable. I would feel for the audience to be able to have that image showing that, I mean, it was right there ready and she started to discuss it. I brought it up, yeah. then I brought it down and and it, it does take that practice in, in doing that. It does. And say hello to Corinda. And Hi, Corinda. It's good to see you, Corinda. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that if, you, if you're going to have a successful debut show and you're going to just come on live and you're just going to talk to the camera and tell your story, then to have something in the background doing the production makes it a lot easier than trying to do everything right at the beginning. Um, and in terms of uh, what a producer needs to know about the show, we've got, uh, well, let's, let's make a list. You, you, 
if you're going to have a show produced, you need to have the title of the show, don't you? And that's mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Yes. Getting the right title. Getting the right title for the show. Oh, and, and making sure that that title is going to draw people in, that it has it's exciting enough and enough enough teaser information to make them go, hmm, I hmm. think I want to check that out. Yeah. And did, so I totally agree. And then the second part is the actual description, the text that's going to go above the video. Again, to attract people in, isn't it? But it's, it's a little more than that. It's, um, go ahead and explain, Stephen. Right, okay. Basically, if you're going to run a show and you're going to run it on Facebook and you want to attract people, as Linda said, sorry, Charles said, you need a, a, a title. I knew that was going to happen, Charles. My apologies. That's okay. Um, <laughs> it was need... the whole makeup thing. It was the whole makeup thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It struck me totally. It, you need a title that's going to attract people in, but you also need a description that's going to attract people in as well. So you need to describe what people are going, who put, right, who is going to be on the show, what will they be talking about, and why should people join? And those, those three elements actually help to draw people in. And the other thing that draws a person in is the graphic as well, isn't it? A show card. Yes, letting people know what's happening on the show. Who is it? What's it about? What are we going to be talking about also on the show card? And making it attractive, an attractive image which by the way, super easy to make in canva.com. You know, I know, I know pr promotion was one of the things that we were going to talk about as well, but that, you know, you know, easy to make in canva.com. And, um, but it's, it's very important to be able to give people enough information to make them want to, to tune in, whether it's live or on the replay to have them tune in for the show. And that, brings us neatly on to promoting which you mentioned and this is the difference between make or break isn't it um, because if nobody knows about your show then nobody's going to watch it so you do have to promote it which how do you promote your shows shows well you know i have several different hubs that i'm cross posting with and so that that helps it i have an actual just a checklist that I really go down when I'm getting ready to, you know, produce and uh, promote my show. So I'm going to create the graphic. And like I said, using canva.com, really easy. I have templates in there. Like if I have a guest, I have a template. All I have to do is change out the picture, change out the name, change out what this is about. And I'm I'm finished. It's it's I don't have to create a whole new show card that's sitting yep. there waiting for me, which that makes it very easy. And um, creating a video. Sometimes I create a, a Lumen Five video. Sometimes I don't. It really depends on how I'm going to be promoting. And just really getting that out there using these hubs your hub is one i have a hub as well mm -hmm. and then yep. a few others that i'm uh, and then i'm cross posting with a few people and so they they allow my show to come across their business page and one thing i'd like to say here that's really important is what you were talking about with the description because if you are cross promoting with someone else's business page mm -hmm. Yeah. It really looks like it's their show as it comes across. And so that description in stating clearly that this is heart mind conversations with Cheryl Piper, you know, lets people know that maybe just because it's running across, say, Stephen's page, that's just an example. I don't run across your page, but um, that people wouldn't think, oh, this is Stephen's show. It says clearly in that description, this is heart mind conversations with Cheryl Piper and it's going to it's going to run on your page but that it's a different show so letting people know so there's no confusion that's very important uh, and more important than you know because if you are cross posting what can happen and has happened is that uh, if you don't say who's actually going to be on the show is it appears on somebody else's business page and the question arises I didn't know you were going to talk about baking cakes. And of course, 
the person who's paid it on doesn't know anything about baking cakes. <laughs> but because you've not said it happened, it did happen. Not mm -hmm. necessarily baking cakes. That was probably a bad example. But it happened that, that it was mistaken, that it was read as that this, this person was actually uh, talking about something that surprised their friends. <laughs> so you've got to be careful, haven't you? I mean, it's not... It's not rocket science. It, 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 it's easy to do, and it, it being the, as clear as you can about who, what, and why uh, does helps your credibility and it helps save arguments as well. Absolutely, and it doesn't upset people. It doesn't upset people. It's I mean, absolutely it, keeping it clear. Indeed, because that that way uh, you don't get into uh, discussions about why did you post that on my timeline. Um, well, oh, ooh, go ahead. No, it's okay. Come. I have something. I have something there because there are a few people that I cross post with, and if I don't feel that what my show is about that day is best for their audience, and and they've trusted me, they said, you know, whatever. If you feel this is great for my audience, please cross post it. But if you feel like it's really not a subject for my audience, then don't. And so I'm really careful that mm. if, if I'm talking about something that I feel is not going to be as enjoyable for their audience, I, I don't put it there. I, you know, and I, I, I appreciate that they trust me with that. It, it is a, a matter of trust and, and, and common sense because mm. you, you wouldn't, I agree totally. I agree totally. That's a very good point. Um, and basically people are actually i mean there are people who have pages they're happy to share the content they only have one show show a week we've got two three four or five shows a week and you've got to be uh you've got to be fair mm -hmm. if somebody's posting cross posting one show to your page you wouldn't shouldn't in my mind actually post cross post five to theirs mm -hmm. yeah you should try and keep it Fair, so that if they post one to yours, you post one to theirs, and and everybody it balances out that way because you don't want to feel that uh, you're taking advantage of people or turning it the other way around that people are taking advantage of you. Exactly, and that what that's what's wonderful about the hubs that are out there because that's what they're designed for. Mm. It's all about cross posting, you know, the live video hub, my video hub connection. You know, all of these are designed specifically yeah. for that. So I just open it up to people, whatever you want to post there, that's fine. That's what it's designed for. Yeah. And there's no, there's no, there's no problems in that respect. Um, okay. Nearly. Um, so we have discussed today uh, helping others to go live with Sean Piper and Steve Healy and um, we've talked about hosting and production and about promoting. And I think the, th the fair thing to say is that if you are thinking of doing a show, then reach out to us, yeah? Absolutely. Reach out to us and let us know what you're thinking about, how we can help, and because what we want, and I know what you want, and what I, I, I want to help and I want to see people getting out there, sharing their gifts with the world, because everybody has something they're really good at and something they're passionate about. And sometimes they're just a little afraid to get out there and put it live and do it. And that's where they need that helping hand, like April said earlier, you know, just reaching out for that helping hand. And April did say it very concisely, getting help from others makes all the difference in the world. And thank you for that, April, uh, which is good. Right. Well, we just start talking. We never stop. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to believe it's been 30 minutes already. Yeah. Wow. Time just flies. Uh, so we're going to be back at the same time next week, are we not? Uh, I want to say yes. I'm traveling because I'm doing workshops uh, All right. Okay. Throughout the week, next week. Do you want, um, if you want to take if you want to take a week off, I, I'm good. I I think we may be good to take a week off because I'm not right. really sure how my camera's going to be, right. how my lighting's okay. going to be, and I'd feel better in my own studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all good. It's all good. Um, so we'll be back in two weeks' time at one p.m. Eastern, 
uh, we'd like to close the show, Cheryl, and then we'll, well, it's all yours. Uh, oh, thank you, Stephen. Okay, thank you so much, everyone who's joined us live, everyone who's joining on the replay. If you are thinking at all about going live, you just, it's kind of just been spinning around in your head a little bit, but you're, you're a little afraid and you don't quite know, oh, can I really do this? First of all, yes, you can. And second of all, we hope these tips have helped you to see that there are people out there like Stephen and I who can come in and host the show for you, come in and do the production for the show, help you with promotion, and just really guide you in that way until you are ready to take that on yourself. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Cheryl Piper, and you can reach me at Cheryl Piper Sends Love. And I'm Stephen from Wiltshire in England. You can find me on belive.tv. And thank you for watching. Bye for now. And we end the broadcast. And that is 